Now that we understand the basics of roots and exponents, we can now use them in equations to solve for x. So let's see how we're going to do that. And this is in addition to adding, multiplying, dividing, subtracting, all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's start with a relatively easy one, number 1 x squared equals 25. Again, we want to get x by itself. We want to have something like x equals. So we want to get rid of the square. Now, what is the opposite operation to a square? Well, it's just a square root. So let's square root this x squared to get rid of that x, because the square root of x squared is just x. You're doing It's like multiplying by something and then dividing by something, that same something. You're, you're, you're just going in a circle. So if we, though, if we Radical this side, we've got to radical the other. We got to, if we do something to one side, we got to do it to the other. Um, so let's go ahead and um, radical both sides, and we're going to get x equals five or minus five, because the square root of uh, because either five or minus five can work here. You got to make sure not to drop your your roots here, because five squared is twenty five, but also minus five squared is twenty five. So you just, square, you just square root both sides, and you're ready to go. Let's look at number two. How about something like x to the 1 half equals 4? Or you could see this written x to the square root of x equals 4. And they're the same things, right? So let's work with this radical one. Now, we have a square root. We want to get x by itself. What is the opposite operation of a, of a square root? Well, it's just a square. So let's square this. But if we square this, we've got to square this side too. So this is just going to be x equals 16. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Now in this case, negative 16 is not going to work because you can't have, I mean, you, not with the purpose of this test, you can't have the radical of negative 16. That gives you imaginary numbers and that is not something that's tested. Let's look at this third one. What if we had something like x to the 2 thirds equals 27? Aha, well, there's a few ways we can, we can approach this one. We can break this up and say this is just nothing but x squared to the 1 third equals 27. Then we could cube both sides, and then we could square root both sides. Totally good, no problems with that at all. Um, you know, I just realized. Let me. I just realized I made up a bad example. Let's do x. I meant x to the three halves equals twenty-seven. Okay, so that's better. So what we can do is we could square both sides first to get rid of the the square root. Right. This is just x to the third square rooted equals 27. We could square both sides, and then we could take the cube root. Or we could do the cube root first, and then do the square. Uh, so another way to look at it is this. You can just deal right with the fractions. 27. So I'm going to get rid of this to the 3. So I'm going to cube root, or 1 third root, both sides. By the exponent rules, this is just going to be 3 halves times a third. These 3's are going to cancel. This is just going to be x to the 1 half, which is what we wanted. And the cube root of 27 is 3. Now I'm just going to square both sides, so I'll just raise both of these sides to the second power. I'm going to lift x over here, and this is going to be 9. And that is my answer. Now, again, we don't have to worry about negative 9 being an answer here. Nor here do we have to worry about having any negative roots, because the cube root of negative 3, for instance, is negative 27, which is not equal to positive 27. Final one is going to be a radical expression. So if you had something like this, boy, I keep getting these Amazon pop up. Sorry about that. Um, let me actually change this. So let's say we had something like this. How do we handle this? Well, again, it's just an equation. So let's combine what we know and uh, go from there. Let's actually make this, let's change this up a bit. Let's make this, I don't know, this might turn out bad, but let's make this a 2x. OK, let's get rid of this 2 first. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. We're left with 3 rat 2x minus 1 equals 9. Well, let's get rid of this 3 before we do anything else. I mean, we could square everything now, but let's just get rid of this 3 first. It's easier just to get down to the bare radical first, just to make your life easier. OK, so uh, this is going to be rat 2x minus 1 equals 9. Well, now I'm going to square both sides. Uh, oh, sorry, 3. Because it's 9 divided by 3 is 3. Square both sides, this is going to be 2x minus 1 equals 9. Add 1 to both sides, we're going to get 2x equals 10. Divide both sides by 2, x equals 5, and there's your answer. So these radical expressions, they look scary, but just follow the rules. Unpack it piece by piece, and you'll be all ready to go.